Hello and welcome back to the PC Gaming Vortex. Uh, my name is Carl. We're going to be continuing our Payday 2 into the Vortex and tutorial series here. What we're doing is we're going to be doing a mission and we're not going to use our higher level stuff. We're going to just jump right in and do it the standard way. So this is the Ukrainian job. What this mission is, is we're supposed to go into these two stores and blow the safes. Uh, drill through the safes and uh, there's going to be a tiara in one of the safes. We're supposed to get the tiara and get to the getaway vehicle. Um, the you know, Obviously we can smash and grab and take as much jewelry as possible and you know the more loot we get the more loot we get um, but the goal tiara getaway vehicle. Um, so we're going to do it with the two AI characters so there'll be two NPCs joining us uh, you can of course do this with up to four players if you wanted uh, but as we are recording we're gonna do it with some computer players um, after this we're gonna do this exact same mission possibly even a higher difficulty but we're gonna do it um, with the higher level stuff and you're gonna see how much it changes when you really get geared out and prepared for the mission on the lower right hand corner I'll go over a couple things uh, there's some information down there based off of the job we took uh, the pay grade uh, the stars shows you how much this pays and the skulls shows you the difficulty so this is actually a uh, an overkill mission this is a hard level mission um, the contract length is how many steps there is to this mission. Um, experience shows you how much experience you're getting, and the payday shows you how much money you're getting. And the yellow amount is how much bonus you're getting for it being overkill. Okay, so before you jump in, you can go into your inventory and your skills and, and edit all of that so you have exactly what you need. I'm going to go into my inventory so that instead of taking ECMs, I am bringing an ammo bag because we're going to need it. And then you always want to, there's in-game voice chat in this. Uh, we're using vent like we usually do, but there is in-game voice chat. So if you're playing with random people, do your best to get the communication going in your team because communication is key when it comes to this game. You want to be working as a co cohesive unit. Um, so Gallows, are you going to bring ammo or are you going to bring a uh, medic bag or what are you bringing? Uh, I don't have access to the medic, but uh, I can either bring ammo or I can bring trip mines. It's up um, to you, really. Well, if it ends up like the last one we did with the two of us, we're probably going to need more ammo, so I would grab ammo. Did you... Got it. Is there any assets available for ammo? Uh, let me check here. I'll, might I'll, well, might want to cover that, too. That, that's yeah. a pretty cool aspect of the game. I agree. That's a really cool aspect of the game. The team leader, which at this point is Gallows, um, has special controls on his side, and we'll, we'll show you what those controls look like when we do our second run of this mission. But um, it allows you to unlock assets. Now, assets are basically you're paying a guy on the inside to do something for you. So, for example, um, on certain missions, you can pay someone to leave an ammo bag hidden away. Um... See, so this guy is leaving a drill for us. Um, we got some intel on what the store looks like, what the tiara looks like, you know, stuff like that. Um, the Some assets, you have to have specific skills to unlock them. Other assets are just available based off the job. And what you're doing is you're spending money out of the money you would make on the job to unlock these assets. So you're saying, you know, put that ammo bag in the copy machine, for example, and we'll get a little less money, but it'll be there if we need it. Definitely a cool aspect. Uh, you can also look here and see what everybody on your crew has, which is pretty cool. As you can see at the bottom, Wolf is Gallows this time, and then I am Dallas, and you can see exactly what our loadouts are. So if you guys aren't really communicating a whole lot yet, you can... Um, Look to see if someone's bringing an ammo bag, if someone's bringing medic kits, if someone has C4, etc. And change yours up last second to make sure you're going. Okie doke. Let's do this. Alrighty, here we go. Okay, so like I had said previously, you start out in casing mode. So I don't have my mask on, I don't have my weapon out. I look, a, you know, a little suspicious because I've got gloves on and a big ammo bag on my hip. But 
As long as I don't do anything too crazy, it should be okay. So what you're doing is you're casing out to see where guards are, to see what the situation is, see where the witnesses are, things like that. So let's take a look. There's probably a guard behind the building. Oh, there's a guard in there, and there's a guard behind the building. Now, one thing you'll notice here, too, is that these question marks will come up, and these are the people who are finding you suspicious. Now, based upon your visibility, which is another one of those uh, stat modifiers with uh, your weapon mods, you know, the level of armor you're wearing, things like that, obviously, you, you having bigger weapons or more armor, you're going to be your visibility score is going up so therefore you're going to be more suspicious so um, you have less time to react and you want to stay away from those guys and those question marks and there are different levels of detection like for example if you take a, a guard out and somebody sees the body that can trip it if someone sees you masking up or sees your gun it can trip it if someone sees you doing criminal criminal activity inside from the outside they can co call the police there's different level ways to get caught and there's different levels to raise awareness and depending on where your points are in your trees there are ways around it. For example, my character on the ghost tree, if you knock someone out, I can body bag them and take them and hide them. Um, another example is uh, ECMs. If you have the ECM item on you, you can knock out security cameras, which gives you a certain window of time before they realize they're out. Um, so there's different aspects of the stealth game before the combat even begins that you can modify your character and get going with. Do we want to take this guy out? Oh, there's a guard. Uh, we got a guard right behind you. I think we're gonna... Oh boy. He don't like you. No, no, we're, we're going down. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so as you saw, there was a gauge going up from the question mark. That was basically right, saying that uh, I was being seen. If it went too much higher, we were gonna get seen. Oh, we're, we've detected. Okay, let's roll. Okay, so that didn't go too smooth, but that's okay. So we need to change our plan now. We need to get in there and, and get going. So he's going to drill on the safe. I'm going to head in the front room, start getting hostages on the ground. So the F button allows you to tell them to get on the ground. If you hit it again, you can zip tie their hands. Everybody gets two. If you are a mastermind, you can actually carry ten if you've got points in there. Hostages are good to have. If they end up capturing one of your partners, you can uh, trade for hostages. Okay, already under fire in the jewelry store. Okay, so our escape van, because we got the heat, just left. They'll come back as soon as everything is gone down a little bit. First couple times through a mission, you're kind of going to learn how it goes, but once you've done it a couple times, you're going to know the consequences of your action and what's going to happen and good places to hide out and, and things like that. Okay, so while we're waiting for the drills, time to smash and grab. Now, since I have... That perk. Now you hear that? Uh, What's up? That crazy noise that kind of starts rattling off there is this is the noise that says a drill's down. So it means somebody's going to have to get back over there and start that that thing back up. So a uh, lot of a lot of cues and audible uh, alerts that you need to be aware of too uh, when you're playing. Not only uh, in the midst of all the gunfire and stuff, but uh, noises like that. Uh, as well as uh, keeping the hostages in place, things like that. It all becomes a, a ballet of sorts to try and coordinate uh, as you're trying to steal and uh, get all this loot back to the van. Yeah, very much so. And you also want to make sure that you're not um, killing any hostages because the hostages going down do deduct from your pay, and that is bad. No civilian casualties. And what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to... Uh, some of the larger loot that we have uh, available, uh, a lot of it's just uh, these necklaces and things that are uh, in the cabinets. You can just kind of grab and snatch up and they'll, you'll keep on your person. But some of the bigger stuff, uh, you'll notice in some of the, uh, the larger 
um, I guess like instead of just watches it'll be like a, a whole a tray of watches and those those require you to actually bag up and what I'm trying to do right now is grab all those big items and take those uh, those bags into an area to where we can kind of secure them and uh, keep them uh, till we're ready to uh, to make our getaway we got some uh, opponents coming in the back one of which is a shield Ooh, we got a good amount of heat already. And they're trying to steal our bags. How dare they? They're coming in through the, the store also. Something else I'll show you is if you notice around our life bar, which is the green circle, there is a white circle that keeps reappearing. Think of it like the shields from like a game like Halo. You have a bit of a shield that builds up, and it builds back up if you go a while without taking damage. You got right in my face there. That wasn't good. Get back with the team here. Cover the doorway. Oh, it looks like they're throwing smoke grenades. I'm gonna drop some ammo. Okay, so I've used my ammo bag, so now I have ammoed up. How's the drill going? Almost done. 30 Let's seconds see the time on this one. On. Okay, so we're, I think we're okay. This one's open. Up, oh, Tierra. Okay, so now we just need to survive till the van gets here and then make our way out. Which, uh, trust me, sounds easy. Now, one thing to note here, really too, is that up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see that, uh, that yellow police assault in progress. That means they're coming hardcore at us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of two options here. We can kind of make a break for it, but the heat's on right now. Or we can kind of wait this out. Uh, kind of thin them down a little bit and hopefully uh, this police assault will end and then we can kind of make our move Yeah, it's definitely good to know everything that's going on and be aware so that you can make good decisions based off of that If you run out into a wave of cops Chances are you're not gonna make it to the van But if you wait until there's a break in them you have a better chance of getting out also of course going out through alleyways and not running out the front door uh, Things like that just uh, it makes sense Are they here? I didn't hear that. Uh, we're s no, we're still going. We're still going. Yeah, might want to grab one of them bags in case we got to make a break for it. Oh, the escape is available, but I think we should probably wait out this assault. Okay. the The other thing to note too that uh, is really interesting and and adds to the replayability here is that these uh, these maps, so to speak, uh, are all randomly generated. So you don't necessarily have the same safes in the same area or this, the same getaway van parked in the same spot. Uh, it is randomly generated. Uh, you know, there's a there's a few different options, but it does uh, have enough variance to it to where you can actually have uh, quite a bit of a, a replayability to uh, each each and every uh, mission that you do do. Yeah, it adds a lot to it. Some of them have a lot of differences. Different witnesses, different safe locations. The bank heist, for example, comes to mind. The layout of the bank will be different each time. Pretty cool. Uh, we should be almost done with this assault, I hope. Yeah. Well, that, that escape area is like right through them. Let's, let's make it down into the alley. Start cutting our way through. be easier just having the two directions to cover instead of covering all these entrances. You want to head out through the right side? Yeah, there's a lot coming in over there though. We got to clear them out first. Wow. We got smoke going.
I'm gonna put down an ammo pack here. Okay. I'm taking quite a bit of damage here. As we know, my area of expertise is RPGs, <laughs> not shooters. There is no friendly fire, by the way, which is uh, very good. Friendly fire would make this very challenging. Good so far. This is a this is a very long police assault. Okay, switching weapons. Okay, reloading. That was, that was really bad. Make a break. Okay, I got mine in there. Okay, so we threw the loot in. We got to the area around the van, and we got out. That was a little hectic, a little exciting. My heart rate's going, sweating. But you know what? That's that's the beauty of the game. That's the fun of it. And that was a, a very hard mission, so the amount of guys and the intensity of the wave was definitely affected by that. Okay, so as you can see, $50,000, bam. Now we're going to get experience. Leveled up. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so now we wait for everybody ready. Now you pick one of the three cards. Kind of a random thing. You see the two you didn't pick. I picked the one in the middle. And I got a mask piece. We'll see what it is. Oh, I got an actual mask. The jaw. Pretty cool looking. You want to explain the, the rarity stuff you were talking about earlier when it comes to the payday system? That was great information. Yeah, the um, the the loot at the end of the mission um, is, of course, just random. You pick your card, and you can get one of three things, either money a mod or a mask or a part of, of the mask itself uh, but they also have rarities to them so as you run these missions and you start to farm them trying to get you know the different mods or different masks and things like that um, you not are not only farming for the actual piece but some of those pieces have different rarities there are I guess what the, you can consider epics or higher rares or whatnot, and those actually even have uh, of colors. I've seen I've seen a purple um, that has dropped, and that's it's called something special. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I do know that uh, it's definitely more rare than uh, some of the other pieces that you'll tend to get. Now they did just recently implement a uh, a two inventory rule. I haven't quite got all the specifics on it, but I do know that you can only have two in your inventory. So hopefully that will take some of the, um, you know, as you, it, some of the, uh, the factors where you're getting pieces over and over and over. So if you have two, then that piece will no longer drop for you. I'm assuming and hopefully uh, and hoping that they actually just replace it with something that you don't have. But it's not to say that maybe you don't get anything. I don't know at this point. But uh, I'm assuming that by them doing that, they're going to take some of the the guessing out of things and uh, the uh, chance aspect of it so that if you played enough you should get what you want. That's very cool. I'm glad they made that change because nothing's worse than getting the same scope five missions in a row. <laughs> very cool. Okay. So that is the Ukrainian job, one of the missions, done in a standard fashion. Putting the drills up, waiting the time frame, um, in our case, my case, I should say, blowing the stealth aspect of it. But uh, that would be a, that's a pretty normal run. That's that's what you see at lower levels. Now we're going to do a Ukrainian job, but we're going to do it um, differently. We're going to do it with uh, Gallows bringing C4. C4 is a higher level unlock that you get on one of the trees, and it definitely requires a higher level than entry level. Um, and it changes the entire mission and we'll show you that next 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch group leadership over to myself so that I can show you the crime net and the way choosing a mission works, the asset system and all of that. Um, and we're going to do the Ukrainian job again, another hard difficulty one, um, but this time, like I said, C4. This is going to be a different experience. Okay, so you just click on crime net. If you're playing with just by yourself with AI, you click on crime net offline, and that's going to allow you to do stuff with just you. Uh, one thing to note, if you hit the F button, it brings this up. You can check the friends only, which means only friends can join your game. And then distance, I assume, we're assuming that means like physical distance, like are they in the same physical living area that you live for like lag reasons, you can change it all the way up to worldwide. Um, as you can see, there's different jobs popping up. Um, you just kind of wait till one catches your eye, you click on it and you go from there. The uh, different things it's showing you, the red outline are pro jobs. Pro jobs, you get one shot. If you don't do it the first try, you don't get to retry it. It's, it's a one-time thing. You get a higher payout for that, but, uh, you know, one shot's it. The white dots is how much it pays out, and the yellow dots is the difficulty level. The more yellow dots, the harder, and, of course, the more money you make. So we're looking for, we're looking for a Ukrainian job, the first Ukrainian job that pops up. I will click on it, and we will jump back in. Like I said, leveling up the trees and really specking into some of the stuff and, and really building out the role of your character um, makes things go a lot quicker and a lot more smooth. Um, as you saw on that last one, we were waiting for the drills to finish. We were, uh, being, <laughs> we were being overran by people because I had tripped the alarms. And uh, we did make it out, but it was, it was pretty heart pounding. As you're going to see, if you go about it a different way, a little more organized, um, it can go completely different so as soon as one pops up normally they go in kind of a rotation um, and every 10 levels it unlocks different missions so you get more added into the rotation so far no Ukrainian jobs yet and of course all of these are different types um, nightclub is pretty cool you got to go up into the office of a nightclub and and wait out a safe and then escape down into the alley. Um, let's see. Mall crashers, you go into a mall and you have to do a bunch of damage inside the mall. That one's really fun. Four stores is literally four stores next to each other. You got to get a certain amount of money and get out. Uh, bank heist is just what it sounds like. It's a bank heist. It's a fun one. Probably the most traditional style heist in this game that I've done so far would be the bank heist. But there is a lot of variation. Um, I was actually just talking to Gallows earlier about one where you are actually cooking meth while you're trying to fight the cops off from getting to you. Very different style of, of play and uh, you know part of the greatness of the game is it's got that variety. You're not just doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. Okay well we will cut back in as soon as we find a Ukrainian job and we will jump right in. Okay, so we did find a, a Ukrainian job mission. We're going to jump in. It took a little while to get it unlocked, but we got one. So now we're going to jump on in. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch out my armor. And the reason is, is with the way we're going to do it, which is in, out, C4, um, the faster you move, the better. You're going to see that this is kind of a smash and grab way of doing it. Okay, so we're going to hit start the heist. It'll bring us into the prep menu. Okay, so once we go into the asset menu, you'll see that if I click on here, it shows it's 8100. I was informed that the, the money for the assets actually do come out of your current money. So you're kind of making a gamble. So if I pay the 8100, for example, and we don't succeed, well, I pay the 8100 and I lose it. We don't succeed. Uh, so this shows that I get the codes for the shutters. I can get all the shutters down in the building, and it costs 8100 Sometimes there's ammo. Sometimes there's inside people. They unlock where the location of things are. It depends on what it might be on that specific mission. Okay, dokes. I think we are ready to go. We good to go? I'm good for my end. Okay. Let's ready up. So this is basically the same mission. It's one less uh, difficulty level, but not that big of a difference, considering you're going to see how different we do it. Okay, so here we go. 
Okay, so he's going straight in. We're not worried about getting seen at all. Get your We're going to mask up. He's going to jump in. Okay, so what's going to happen is he is going to put the C4 on the safe. I'm going to wait here for it to blow. It blew. Okay, TR is not in this one. Okay, he's C4 in the other one. Okay, TR is in that one. And we're out of here. There we go. You coming? Behind me? And there it is. So as you can see, same mission we did before, but with that C4, blow that safe quick. So planning and having the right stuff unlocked makes a huge difference. Um, completely changes the game. Now, we didn't get quite as much cash on this one because it wasn't as hard of a difficulty, but it wouldn't have changed the way that mission went if this was even a, a three skull and overkill. Um, it just, you run in, C4, move as a team, follow the plan, good to go. Okay, so payday on the mass piece. Let's see what I got. I got some colors. Warm yellow and olive green. Sounds exciting. Okay, back into the lobby. We can choose another contract. So, um, Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, you saw the, the two two ways to do it. They are very different. One is based off of higher level gear. Um, obviously more planning involved and uh, executing, you know, it's not just hold the guys off while we, we drill the safes. It's uh, run in, blow the safes, and go. Um, so, that is Payday 2. A fantastic game, in my opinion. We will be doing a bonus episode, uh, hopefully soon, that will show an actual four-player match with the two of us and a couple friends of ours. It'll be less in the commentary vein and more in the what a normal game goes like and what the talk is like and the planning and the communication. Um, you know, just kind of how a game flows. Um, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Like the video if you enjoyed yourself. Uh, hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, if there's a game you'd like to see next, let us know. Okay, we'll see you guys next time.